Joe Rogan equates the flat earth movement with the true origins of Christianity, basically saying that that is where it came from. The Bible is where the flat earth came from. Uh, let's get into this conversation. This is from episode 2039 with Michael Easter, and they get into the uh, flat earth conversation. Very interesting stuff. Go ahead. He took me you know, around the ISS and showed me the place over Zoom. So he's talking about uh, his friend that was in space, maybe an astronaut or something. Uh, showing him through the space station and then out the window through Zoom or something like that. So his friend was in space. Yep. Which is real. Yep. It, oh, okay. I mean, space is real. To each their own. And was and called him on Zoom and was showing him the Earth. Yep. So he's describing it now. Wow. And then two. At one point, he flips the the screen and shows me the Earth. And at least in that instance, I can tell you that it was round. <laughs> Maybe it's just a disc. Could be. That's a, a lot of the <laughs> could be. In deep people think they think it's a disc. I think it's all a religious thing. They, they think that um, they're, they're going off of some passages in the Bible where they refer to the firmament and they, they refer to like, uh, the, the, they, they believe somehow there's like this dome over the earth and that the, the stars just light. Hold on, hold on. How does he know this much about this position? You know, you know, conspiracy theorists. This man said there's, he literally is reciting all the talking points of the oh, yeah. Christian flat earthers, except the actual Bible verse, which he could, he could probably track those down. But yeah. this is, there's a whole thing thing of this like they talk about this talk about the firmament they talk about the dome they talk about all these things over the earth and being a disc wow it's just lights and the the reason why the moon landing is fake is because the moon is not real <laughs> i read that one today i was like oh boy and then uh you know some people think that stars are fake they, they don't think space is real they it's think like, it's all it's, it's like we're living in the Truman Show. You remember the Truman oh, Show? Oh yeah. That's when a there's great, a there's a big movie. there's a big doom and you're like you're looking out but it, you think you're looking at the sky but it's all superficial artificial light and it's not that he's on an island. He's literally in a massive set. Yeah. That's 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 kind of what, what this position holds to. They think it's like a big Mr. Beast video. It's, it's like a, it's, oh, <laughs> it's like a big Mr. Beast video. <laughs> they think it's all a con by Satan or someone. And then that all these uh, space agencies are in cahoots with Satan, which is really wild if you think about, like, did they deny satellites? Like, how much did they deny? Did they deny satellites? Like, do you believe in direct TV? <laughs> is that a satellite? Okay. Do you believe that the satellites are taking photos? Are they taking any? What about the weather patterns? What about their ability to discern weather patterns as they move across the globe? What about the flight patterns? What about the fact that you can actually track planes as they go around the globe? I mean, the most egregious one is when they've repeatedly offered to fly folks from South America to Australia. And based on a flat earth map, that would take, I, I want to say, over 10 hours and you can like make the flight way shorter. And uh, and they say that the way that, that the way that that's possible is that there's these like super fast wind currents that make that flight path possible and cut the time in half. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, what do you think about that? So, okay, so that's that, that's what Joe Rogan had to say. Now we're kind of gonna dive into some of the Christians that actually believe this stuff. Okay. Okay, because I think it's important to have context. So this is gonna give us the Bible verses that they use to form this firmament position. Correct. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. He's right there. They, you know, might know their own language. You call me crazy. Call me crazy. I know that's insane for me to suggest such a thing. But these uh, Jewish scholars who took their own Hebrew scriptures and turned it into their English version, the JPS Tanakh Bible, oh, they said circle of the earth. They didn't say reeling, rock and rolling, orbiting, spinning, globe sphere earth. They said circle of the earth. New American Standard, a vault of the earth. That's interesting. They threw the word vault in there. Jubilee's Bible, Jubilee Bible 2000, circle of the earth. King James 2000, circle of the earth. American King James, circle of the earth. American Standard Version, circle of the earth. Dewey Rhymes Bible, upon the globe of the earth. Oh, that's interesting. Dewey Rhymes. Oh, that would be following on the heels of uh, the Copernican Revolution. So that doesn't really surprise me, especially since this is a, a Catholic Bible. It's a, it's a, hold on. It's a Catholic conspiracy? Yeah, yeah. He's saying everything post <laughs> Copernus or whatever. His name oh my is. God! Okay, hold on. This is the part. Yeah. Theory of a heliocentric universe was well known at the upper strata of the Catholic Church in his lifetime. While he preferred his theories published after his death, he ultimately agreed to publish his manuscripts on the persistent appeals of high church officials. The necessity to change public conception from an accurate belief in a flat enclosed Earth to a false belief grew slowly. With sapient baby steps, the whole world would become amenable to the final delusion of an alien invasion under the first woe. 
the Catholic hierarchy had the perfect opportunity to lay groundwork for a global deception to culminate in this Earth's final generation. I'm a Protestant for a reason. Okay. Right? Like, I think Luther was definitely on to something. Luther was right. All right? That, that, that We needed that to happen, but Luther was also trying to reform the church and not start a new church, and I think he was right. However, I feel like Catholics just be catching strays out here sometimes. They do! <laughs> this turned into... There's a firmament, and the Catholic Church and NASA are in cahoots with Satan to cover it up. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> There's plenty of critique to go towards the Catholic Church, but this is like, this is, this is next level. Th this is next level. This deception required a globe Earth spinning throughout the vast reaches of space, space inhabited by aliens and other sentient life forms. These contrivances created doubt in the Bible, putting science ahead of scripture, which advises mankind the earth is enclosed and unmoving. They also place the creator far away from his creation by presenting a universe unimaginably vast. Okay, stop it. Let me, let me just say this. Let me just say this. And maybe this will help Rogan and, and people who look at this, right? Yeah. When you look at any movement where Christians or, or self-professed Christians or anything, and the position becomes... We have the secret knowledge, and it's kind of only us and our crew that got it right, and everybody else got it wrong, or everybody's just not as enlightened as us. Th these are sure sales, sale signs of like cult-like behavior. I'm not calling these folks in a cult, but they're cult-like behavior. And you can have cult-like behavior in, in, and not necessarily be like in an official cult, but, but be in, in a mentality where you're trying to be preserved as this like one and only remnant that has all the answers and has all the all the all the things figured out and everybody else is wrong. And just logically speaking, I think God is way bigger than that. Like God's heart is that none should perish. God's heart is that all should come to him. And God's heart is definitely not that the billions of Christians that have walked to earth have all been under this mass delusion and Everyone else got this wrong except this tiny, small remnant that still holds to this position. And then what would you say to the people that believe that go to the Bible to interpret their um, scientific findings or astrological findings? Well, I would say they're misinterpreting the Bible first and foremost. Mm. I think they're getting the Bible wrong, right? And so I think if, they get, if you're getting the Bible wrong, then you're going to use your wrong interpretation of the Bible to interpret your view of science. And I think that, that that's what it is. Like you, you have to go to the Bible for what it is, which is not a scientific textbook, first of all, mm -hmm. right? And then you, you you have aspects of science that aren't spiritual; they're natural. So they're 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 you can you could may easily make a categorical error on both ends of the extreme. You can go to the Bible for science, or you go to science for spirituality, it's yeah. spiritual realm stuff. And then neither that's not what those well, this science is there to examine the natural world, not to give us answers about what's happening in the spiritual world, yeah. right? So, yeah. And and <laughs> these are the types of people that like, these are the types of uh, stories and beliefs that create the the stupid little yard sign that says like science is real. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's like, no one's debating science is real except for maybe maybe these guys. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, when I say like, you don't go to the Bible for science, I'm not saying that there aren't things that are true in the Bible about science. Right? The Bible talks about natural things. Yeah. So reap, right? Yeah. Like, like yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah. talking about natural things that are that are scientific. I'm saying that the Bible is not a scientific textbook, yep. right? The Bible is about God's covenant with his people and being on mission to redeem us and save us from our sin and the world and and hell ultimately and God pressing into his people and trying to redeem his people. That's what the Bible's about. And it's communicating that message. And it's communicating that message in, in all types of different genres. There's poetry, there's music, there's um, history, there's prophecy. It's but, but it's not a scientific textbook. Yeah. Go ahead. The same way that we, go, we don't go, uh, wow, well, you don't believe in science if you say, what time does the sun rise this morning? Mm -hmm. The sun doesn't rise. Right, it's a, it's, a, it's a figure of speech. It's a figure of speech. Right, right, right. Yeah. All right, so this... Um, this guy named Ryan Sk Rob Skiba, kind of the the face of this movement, mm -hmm. one of the country's most prominent advocates of flat Earth theory. Sh uh, Shaikba was also skeptical of COVID nineteen vaccines and some of the illnesses treatments. On the first day of the Take on the World conference, Shika authored a Facebook post suggesting that the COVID nineteen vaccines were dangerous. Which, to be fair, there's some su suggestive findings on on uh, amongst young people. 
Uh, amongst young people and, and what is it, my, Milo yeah. or cr cr colitis, the heart condition, amongst young people. Um, and, and just a sheer volume of scale, there's going to be issues when you when you have a billion a billion anything you're gonna have some side effects and some issues and some and some injury um to this sort of thing shout out to inspiring philosophy okay she says proven scripture where it clearly teaches the earth is flat you're going to need reference the original koinonia, Greek. koinonia and hebrew because i have and then she goes with her head covering first chronicles 16 30 <laughs> he's, here, here he's gonna blow a head back yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> these hyper literal readings of biblical verses are insane for one we know the earth is round and we've known that for thousands of years two this is special pleading you're not going to take hyper literal readings of other verses let me show you proverbs 23 16 my inmost being will exalt when your lips speak what is right but the word there for inmost being is kidneys. Mm. So do you think your kidneys are literally going to grow a mouth and start rejoicing? Hebrews 7 says Levi was in the loins of Abraham when he was before Melchizedek. So do you think Levi was literally inside of Abraham? Or do you agree with modern science that Levi came into existence at conception? Psalm 91 says he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. So do you think God is a giant chicken? That's a joke, boy. You missed it. Went right past you. You gotta keep him. I see you gotta keep on your toes. The Bible's not a scientific textbook. Come on. It's a book on theology, morality, and history. You're trying to take the literal meaning of the words to derive scientific facts. When what you should actually be doing is trying to understand the theological or moral message the words are intending for you to get. Mm. For example, it's like if I said, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Mm -hmm. I do not mean the thing that pumps blood. I mean, love God from your innermost being. Amen. You're not supposed to take the literal meaning of my words, but understand you're supposed to get a theological message out of the metaphors I used. What you're doing is confusing locution with illocution. And if you want more, I have an in-depth video on my channel, which goes into detail. Hey, massive W from aspiring philosophy we should have him back on the channel sooner than later i uh i i dearly appreciate him i think this is yeah like inspiring philosophy we see according to the bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with god's will for the christians watching this channel i want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life and the only way i've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things one it allows me to reflect and come to god humbly and ask him to move on my behalf and two it allows me to document my prayers which ultimately helped me remember the very things that i was praying for and see the hand of god tangibly in my life when he answers them so i would urge you consider writing down your prayers it could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think would be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.